And a picturesque day along the Seine River as we bring you into Paris, France for the second stop of the 2023 Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. And with the Eiffel Tower as the backdrop, it's a mind-blowing viewpoint, pretty much a real-life postcard here. Trace Worthington, as always, joined by the Joey Zuber. Bonjour, hello, <laughs> merci, thank you for joining us. Huge crowd, Eiffel Tower, cliff diving lead. Joey Zuber sitting next to me. What else do I need? Let's roll. Yeah, a little picnic hamper. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Exciting competition heading our way, but here's the calendar. Yeah, Boston, USA set the tone by hosting the first stop a couple weeks ago. That brings us here to Paris, France for stop number two. Then we head to southern Italy as Polignano Amare takes on stop number three and then a brand new location this season as Takachio Japan makes the list. A series classic in Mostar, Bosnia and Herzegovina off the old bridge for stop number five. And then finally in November, we drop right into the city of Auckland, New Zealand, which is another new location to host the World Series. Quite the season, Joey. Every dive, every competition counts for the athletes. Huge season on hand. And it and does. Got to be consistent across all six competitions. And there you have the Debilly footbridge right there, a famous footbridge that you'll see a lot of spectators packing into as Paris, France, stop number two, takes center stage today on the Seine River. And that women's platform, 21 meters, meters 70 feet above the water. Tenth time France has hosted the series. Here's a look at the historic and special moments in this amazing country over the past 10 years. France. The nation of Eiffel Tower, good food, amazing landscapes, and a Red Bull cliff diving, of course. 2023 is the year of the 10th edition happening in the country. France is, is really special for Red Bull cliff diving. Um, this is where everything started. Four locations in the country, very different one from the other. From the first stop in 2009 in La Rochelle, until today's second edition in Paris, there is one person who can remember it all. The local hero, Gary Hunt. San Rafael was very special also. I mean, diving from the cliffs there, it's, it's heaven. You've got so many great places to dive. Um, but La Rochelle for me uh, is the top. Rhiannon Ifland is one of a kind and the kind of one who can do nothing but cherish the stops in France. After her victories in San Rafael in 2021 and Paris in 2022, she is going for her personal hat-trick in French waters. I used to work in France, I used to dive in France. Um, I, I visited here a lot, so I, I feel kind of connected to the country in a way, so it'll be super special to, to go three in a row in France. The stage is set. The River Seine is waiting. It's time to dive for history once more in France. So many beautiful locations. This is the urban setting Today is super in nice. France. There's Aiden Heslop, youngest male competitor. Diving well, and there he is, the Frenchman, Gary Hunt. Fans packed in to see that guy dive. We'll see what he pulls out, sitting in the middle of the pack. Very uncharacteristic. We'll see if he can make a comeback today. And there is Konstantin Popovich, the top male diver after three rounds. Four total rounds of diving for both the women and the men. We'll see the women first right now. We'll talk about Boston, Joey, and the winners there. Oh, the season over in Boston. Pretty cold and windy. And Rihanna Nifflin handling the challenges to take the win there. And then Konstantin Popovich from Romania, the comeback kid, <laughs> coming back from injury in the 2022 season. And what an incredible win and a way to gain the confidence heading into this season. Pretty fun off the rooftop of the ICM, the Institute of Contemporary Art there in Boston. There's Genevieve Singpan, just got married. Genevieve Bradley, if you watched last year and uh, changing her name up. She'll be out of the competition. She just told us earlier that uh, she had a little bad landing in practice, so she's going to step aside. Good thing. Yep. Well, that's we want to launch off a platform of this size, but uh, good for her to pull out of the competition. So 11 women now get set to dive, and it is all led by Rhiannon Iflin, who was the top competitor after three rounds of diving. 
Women to watch. Molly Carlson, round one, Joey. Wow, right. she's, put, she's putting on a pretty good show here in Paris. Yeah, brand new dive there, reverse double tuck, uh, somersault, maintaining that story of that Ifland and Carlson duel. So Molly leading the way after round one, but currently in second position after three rounds of diving. And then look at Rihanna Ifland, round two. <laughs> the entry, as always, super, super clean. And Rihanna Nifland currently in the lead in the competition after the three rounds. But how about this brilliant dive by Ellie Smart and a superb comeback after her disappointing competition in Boston. Where is she sitting? Third place currently. Yeah. Beautiful images there, hurtling their way towards the water, 71 kilometers per hour. The point spread trace is pretty close. We're in for a real tight competition. Check it out. So there you have that platform. The men is, men's platform is above it. So once again, 20 meters, 70 feet off the Seine River. And it's only a six meter, 20 foot deep area that they're landing in. And the fans are, are packed in here for stop number two. Four rounds of diving, three have already happened. Let's get you up to speed on how this works. Eight men and eight women are permanent divers in the 2023 season. Four wild card divers are added to every stop for a total of 24 athletes, Joey, between the men and the women. Uh, that's right. So it's four rounds of diving, each of them being judged, and every dive counts. Now, it's only three seconds to judge a diver's execution, and this includes the takeoff of the dive point. Then it's about the position in the air and the form, and then, of course, the last part, that critical water entry. Yeah, and the scoring pretty straightforward. There's five judges. They present a score between 0 and 10. The low and high scores are scratched. The remaining three, they're multiplied by the DD, which is the degree of difficulty equaling the total score. So clearly, Joey, the bigger you go, the clean form, backed with a nice landing, you're going to capture the judges' attention. Yeah, plenty of high degree of difficulty in this competition as well. At every World Series stop, four total dives make up the final score and points are awarded at each stop. Then those points are added together, which go towards the World Series standings. And now, folks, this, but wait, season, there's more. this season, there's more. There's more. Ten additional overall World Series points will be rewarded for the best dive performed at each tour stop, Trace. And like the yellow jersey of the Tour de France or the French Open Cup, the King Kai Keeley Trophy is the equivalent for the top male and female cliff divers on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. So the bridge, starting to see a lot of foot traffic there. The Eiffel Tower in the backdrop. That's the Debilly Bridge, a 125 meter, 400 foot bridge, arch bridge, bestriding the Seine River, originally built to accommodate visitor traffic for the 1900 World's Fair. And the judges panel, you have Olivier Morneau de Carte of France, or I mean of Canada, Valerio Palazzo is here, Egil Ormason, Jeff Arbin from Australia, Cyril Omechkan of France, the former World Series diver. So the judges perched right there on the boat. We'll see if that boat doesn't rock too much for those guys throughout the program. And the women coming up. Remember, four rounds of diving, and the clouds are rolling in a little bit. Some rain yesterday affected yep. some of the some of the first round, first three rounds of diving, and we're hoping that holds off right now, Joey, because uh, that could wreak havoc when you're trying to launch 21 meters, 70 feet into a river. Yeah, yesterday's competition was pretty challenging. Three rounds in total. Yeah, and the start list looks like this. So you have the lowest scores after three rounds of diving run first. So Madeleine Bayonne, the rookie from France, she'll dive first, and you see the list going right down there. A DNS by Genevieve Sangpan, as we said. She took herself out of the competition from a bad landing and training earlier. So Maley Carpenter of the United States in that mix. And then you have, right now, it is Ian Schmidbauer, Jessica McCauley, Ellie Smart, top three now, Molly Carlson, and Rhiannon Iflin. She will dive last. So all eyes on that group right there for this fourth and final round of diving. And there is a beautiful shot of the tower. Genevieve Sangpan of the United States. Take a look back at that landing. What went wrong here, Joey? Just a little bit. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the, the big fears in the sport of cliff diving and uh -huh. diving is losing your way in the air, and occasionally you can get disorientated. So this is part of the reality of this sport. 
And at those speeds, 71 kilometers per hour, it's a hard impact. So probably a good idea to pull out of the competition. But we're going to wish Genevieve all the best for, the, for her recovery. And I'm sure she'll come back strong. Yeah, yeah she'll come back strong. And uh, good save there, though, by the way. Yeah, it really was. Good, save. good bailout. You have to do that. There's more competitions coming up. This is the second stop of six. So Paris, France, stop number two. The Eiffel Tower is the backdrop. A lot of the athletes are telling me, Joey, that they're just distracted by the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're trying to get focused on their dive. They're, they're getting distracted by that. But one person who's seen the Eiffel Tower many times is Madeleine Bayon, making her debut here on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. The first French female ever to compete on the World Series. And, uh, you know, her first ever dive from 20 meters was only in February of this year. Pretty impressive. And what an honor to be standing here in front of your home crowd. Scuba dive is splashing the surface of the water. You can see the dive on the left hand side of the screen. Back double pike. And we are underway as Madeleine Bayonne, the 25 year old French diver, kicks off the fourth and final round for the women. And as you said, she's a relative newcomer to the sport, so gaining valuable experience. And it's not easy. Yeah. And your first time in front of thousands and thousands yeah. of spectators. Pretty nerve-wracking yeah. standing on that platform. She told us she had to suffer through many belly flops to get to where she is today and compete here in France. Yes, well, we've all had uh, our own pancakes in the past. <laughs> that's part of the that's part of the initi initiation of being a diver or a high diver from time to time, especially in the beginning. You're going to take some shots. And, you, well, you don't need to do that, but it's part of the yeah. process and to help you to learn how to adjust. So sometimes you're rotating too fast and in that particular case, over-rotating. Five judges, the high and the lower toss. So on that dive in the yellow, 43-2-0. So that's what she had on her fourth round dive. All four dives added together is what you're looking at there. So that is a good debut for Madeleine Bayonne of France. No pun intended, but getting her feet wet here on the World Series. Now, from rookie to veteran, we go. Anna Batter, the 39-year-old diver from Germany. One of the pioneers of women's cliff diving, still rocking it. Mother of two kids. She speaks fluent French, so she feels comfortable here. And Joey, you know, what do you think her kids think about this now? They're, they're old enough to kind of watch. I mean, is it cool to watch mom diving from that high, or do you think you're... Mom's a rock star. Kids, kids might That's be what I'd be like, I'd go, mom. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> Kids get nervous, but uh, she is a graceful diver. We'll talk about form as well and what the judges are looking for. Okay, so they're not judging the degree of difficulty. They're going to judge the execution. Then look at the takeoff. Is it powerful? What's the form like in the air? There's Rihanna Nifland, the champion, six-time Rebel Cliff Diving World Series champion. So explain this diving chart right here and how this works. It's going to pop up here. So Degree of difficulty. Exactly. What type of dive they're doing. So the athletes have to prescribe what dive they're going to do so the judges know what they're looking for. Okay. So we've got a forward three somersaults with a half twist. And you can see that tariff, which is 3.4. That marks the degree of difficulty. How hard is the dive? Again, 21 meters, 70 feet off the surface of the Seine River. This is where the nerves are building up. Going in. Wow, there you have it right there, slicing into the Seine River. And Joey, she describes her diving style as calm and exquisite. And that is what it looked like to me, anyway. It's pretty exquisite. You're the expert, but yes, yeah, it looks yes, pretty exquisite. It is exquisite. exquisite to me. That's quite an adjective. I like that. I'm going to use that one. I'll add that to my repertoire. But no, in all seriousness, she's a very, very graceful diver. So the judges need to look at the takeoff. Is it powerful? Are you jumping up nice and strong? Good throw, throwing the arms to generate the rotation. Are the legs straight? Yes, they are. Is the pike tight? Pike is when the legs are folded against the body. 
And as they're entering the water, why are they landing feet first? Because they're traveling at breakneck speed. 71 kilometers per hour. Yep. Very, very fast. Tough impact. Yeah, all the boats going by, all the people watching. A lot of distractions here as Anna Batter with the 69.7 on the fourth and final dive. You see that in the yellow? So 219.30 is her grand total when you add all four dives together. So she is in fifth place. So won't reach the podium today here in Paris, France. But nevertheless, so fun to watch the 39-year-old veteran Anna Batter. Orlando Duque right there, the legend, Red Bull cliff diving pioneer and our sports director. Succeeding Nikki Stakovich, Olympic champion Greg Luganis, a role that has clearly been filled by icons of cliff diving in the past. So Orlando doing a great job as we look at Celia Fernandez, because Genevieve Sangpan is a scratch. She'll move on to Celia, the 35-year-old from 34-year-old from Spain. Okay, let's step things up a notch. Now look at the degree of difficulty tariff. Left-hand side of the screen, flashing red, 4.2. It's almost at the maximum, 4.8. And this, I mean, this and is crazy right stand. here. Yeah. I mean, look at that. She's off. 21 meters, 70 feet after an arm stand dive. I don't care what. No. How big that splash is. No. That's impressive. I, trust me. There's one thing when you're standing on the side of the river looking up the platform. Oh, yeah, that's kind of high. <laughs> then you look down and you get up there and you go, okay, like those scuba divers look like little tiny, tiny, tiny people. And explain the scuba divers. What's their role? Okay, so they're safety divers. They're there just in case there might be an incident to retrieve the divers. A secondary role is to splash the water to help the athletes see the surface. Entering the twist here, the arms will come out wide and now she's looking at the water, so you need to see that splash to help you gauge how high you are off the water. Now, in that case, you can see, obviously, it kicking up a huge splash, over-rotating. It's like a BMX bike. If you've done a backflip and you land on your back wheel, you've gone over. Yep. You come in short, you're landing on your front wheel. So we've, all, we've all been there popping a wheelie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then just going to your back. Showing off and then not going to play. <laughs> so she'll be in seventh with a grand total of 20960. So now let's head down to the dockside with David O.C., who caught up with Jessica McCauley, who is going to uh, slow down after this season. Dave. Well, Jess, a big announcement yesterday. Can we ask what brought you to the decision to retire at the end of this season? Yeah, of course. Yesterday I made my announcement that I'm going to be retiring. I came to this decision because I'm just ready to invest my time a little bit differently in my life. I've been focusing on diving for the last 22 years, and I, I want to move into a van with my partner, focus on my life coaching business, and start developing um, the foundation to build a family. All right. And so bringing things back to the 2023 series, does this decision affect the way you're diving? You're no longer competing for a permanent spot and actually just out there for the love of the sport. Yeah, this decision affects how I'm diving greatly because I it feel like I've fallen back in love with the sport of diving. I'm appreciating every single moment and I'm also really focusing on my mindset this year and trying to compete the best that I've ever competed. All right, thank you so much and back to Trace. All right, thanks a lot, Dave, down by the river. And uh, we're going to miss Jess. I mean, she's yeah, such will. a great personality for the sport. But we, we have her for the rest of the stops this season. So yeah. let's enjoy and celebrate what uh, what she brings for the rest of the 2023 season. Yeah, what well, a great character in the sport of cliff diving, but uh, wishing her all the best for the future endeavors. So really like that she's entering a new realm in her life, a new stage. Yeah. So I went online and checked out some of her life coaching videos. She's doing a nice, very nice job with that. So yeah. I encourage you to check that out when you have a chance as we go back to the women's platform 21 meters 70 feet off the Seine River stands Meili Carpenter of the United States now a permanent diver on the World Series consistent proven season in 2022 only her 12th World Cup start hit the podium twice very impressive two third place finishes last season she's going quick a difficult dive a little bit of a splash on that landing nevertheless Melee Carpenter putting one down. 
And when you talk about splash, yeah. Joey, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know. Well, the entry. To, yeah, because that's what everybody looks at when you look at a traditional diving in the Olympics. It, it, you know, you, everybody talks about the splash. Yeah, or, or a landing in gymnastics. It's not It's not exactly what it's all about. No, it isn't. So it's very important to try and be as vertical as possible on the entry. So once again, looking at the takeoff, good strong jump. She's a great athlete. Beautiful twist there. The abs working hard, coming around, looking at the water. And she was actually saying that she actually likes the feeling when she enters the water. Now, it's quite interesting. When you hit the water, <laughs> sometimes it feels good, right? Sometimes. Real, really? But then, actually, you can be vertical, but underneath the water, you can just be torn apart. The water can be brutal, although speeds can be brutal. See, the high and the low on the left-hand side, they are dropped. The remaining three multiplied by the degree of difficulty. Fourth round dive, 75-25. She moves into the lead with 251-40. So, Maley Carpenter of the United States, she is fourth to go of 11. Remember Genevieve Sangpan, Genevieve Bradley, for those who watched cliff diving last year, is a scratch. Now, there is Ellie Smart, three podium finishes on the World Series, prepping and ready to go, sitting in a great position. Yeah. Slow start to the season in Boston, made a charge earlier in the first three rounds. She is sitting in third, coming into this fourth and final round. Remember, 11 women, and this is Simone Leithead. She is fifth to go of 11, making her debut. All the divers going super quick, and I'm impressed for you to run, for anybody to run that's a rookie in the middle of the pack <laughs> right now. That means you qualified pretty high. And considering she only started cliff diving in October of 2022, now that is just absolutely impressive. And she wasn't really interested in high diving in the beginning, but one of the coaches there in Montreal said, hey, why don't you try a little bit of, you know, feet first landing? She's oh, okay, maybe. And they had a junior competition, went on to win the junior international high diving competition in Montreal. And and stepped it up yeah. and here she is on the world stage diving from 21 meters she said it's pretty daunting you? diving in an outdoor environment yeah. so she's used to be diving mm. in a controlled environment indoors in montreal right so it's controlled there's no wind you're not affected by the waves oh, but a great wow. entry i mean for a first competition, outstanding, Simone Leadhead. So, 20 year old Simone Leadhead with a bunch of eights. She'll keep two of them at an eight and a half. 98 on that, folks. 285, 6 0 for the rookie in her debut. Moves into the number one spot. She's fifth to go of 11. So, she is going to set the pace for herself with a very high personal best, no matter the results from now on forward. Wow, talk about those nerves. She handled them nicely there. So you have Leadhead in the lead. Maley Carpenter in second. You have Iflin in third. We haven't even seen her fourth and final dive. That's how high her score is after three rounds of diving. And coming up next, you have Yana Netsirava. Once again, three rounds of diving happened yesterday. Today is the fourth and final round. All four dives are added together. So it's not just about this fourth round, although it is extremely important. As we look at the veteran, 31-year-old independent athlete, Yana Netsirava turned 31 a few days ago on the 14th of June. Okay, so wow, yeah. thrills the entry <laughs> there. But Joey, we've seen handstands, we've seen people just standing forward and backwards in all these different positions, the new rule, you have to have four different dive positions, as you explained earlier in our graphic, but this one, a running start, that was interesting. Yeah, it was. In the past, we only did takeoff standing, or we also did arm stand dives, but then Gary Hunt introduced the running takeoff, and everyone was like, wow, what are you doing? But the reason, why do you do the running takeoff? It helps you get the rotation, helps you get more height when you're doing these difficult dives. This is round four. It's all about ramping up the degree of difficulty. The more somersaults, the more twists that you do, the higher the tariff, but you still got to get good scores from the judges, right? So you're playing that game of risk versus reward in this case. And what are the rewards? There are the judges on the boat right there. You see a bunch of six and a halfs, the high a seven and a half. So once again, the high and low tossed. In this case, you'll see right there, the six and a half and seven are dropped. The remaining three multiplied by the degree of difficulty. So a 78 on that last dive, 274, 20 when you add all four together from yesterday and today. She'll move into second with Leadhead, the rookie, in her debut, still in the lead. Wow.
Women's platform, 21 meters, 70 feet off the Seine River here in Paris, France. Stop number two of six in the 2023 season. This is Iris Spitbauer, a permanent diver. She actually re-earned her permanent diver position after losing it for a season. Kicked off the season with a seventh in Boston. European Championship gold medalist from last year. Big DD, 4.3 degree of difficulty, back three somersaults, two twists. Beautifully done yeah. by the German diver, 28-year-old Iris Schmidbauer, drilling one in to the Seine River. And Joey, we asked her what the most terrifying thing is about cliff diving, and she told us the height. Everything in your body tells you not to dive off, but you do it anyway. And you, yeah, I told yeah. you that yesterday, and you said, I know, I've been there before. It is. It's like you've got your mom on your left-hand shoulder saying, no, no, I don't know if you should be doing this. Then you've got yourself saying, yes, yes, you can do this. So you've got this inner jewel. And then so your grandmother yeah, saying, no yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. Grandma just calls trucks, that's <laughs> it. No, but it, it really is a challenging sport mentally. I mean, every time you wake up in the morning, you're always nervous. It's hard to eat your breakfast. All the people say they must have no fear. No, let me tell you, they do. But let's talk about the dive. What a fantastic entry for Iris Schmidbau. Wow. Well, there you go. So a bunch of eights and a huge score with the 103-20. When you add all four together, 316-80. So Schmidbauer, beautiful job, moves into the top spot. And only four divers remain in this fourth and final round. And then we'll get into the men's competition next. There's Molly Carlson getting ready to go. She has one career victory on the World Series. That was in Boston last season. She still has to surpass Rhiannon Iflin, who is so powerful and strong. But we'll talk about Molly Carlson's difficulty in a little bit because it is a bit higher than Iflin coming into this fourth round. But here's Jessica McCauley, who we heard from earlier. And as she mentioned, her last season on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. 30 years old, finished fourth in Boston at the season opener. 12 total World Series podiums since 2017, but still looking to step on top of the podium box for a win. Highly capable of doing that. She has this competition and four others before her retirement to get on top of that podium box. Jessica needs to score eight to move into the lead. So look at the left-hand side of the screen. Back three somersaults in the pike position. The legs will stay straight. So she'll jump up, reach the arms up. The legs will come to the body. Got to get the come out just right. The aerial awareness is key here. Jessica McCauley, and we'll see what the judges think of that as Iris Schmidbauer, the current leader, looking on. And that was a beautiful dive. And I just love her form in the air, Joey. You talk about execution, and that's what Jessica McCauley possesses in my mind. You have that coupled with the Eiffel Tower in the background. That was a postcard right there. She's all class and all style. So some athletes are so smooth, they make everything look easy. Look at the arms, nice and straight, good elevation. The legs staying perfectly straight, counting the somersault, seeing the water for the second time to orientate herself so she knows where to come out of the dive. This is where you need to make those very, very careful adjustments towards the entry. That last part of the dive trace is just so quick. Also, you need to be very powerful in the sport, work on your strength training and your power as well so you can get that elevation from the platform. It's superb aerial awareness. I just love watching Jessica McCauley dive. A little short of vertical, so let's see how the scores fare. Vertical, straight up and down is what Joey's referring to. Bunch of seven and a halfs there. 90 on that fourth round dive. She'll move into second with a grand total after four rounds added together. Three rounds yesterday. 315-80 for Jessica McCauley. Schmidbauer still holds down the top spot by one point over Jessica McCauley. So that was tight. 
Again, we are in the fourth and final round for the women here at the second stop of the 2023 Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. And right there you have Batamouche, the boats. People loving it. Long cruises, gourmet lunches, dinners in there, a lot of music, having some fun. Not for me, Joey, sitting in a boat with 300 people. But anyway, let's move on. <laughs> Ellie Smart, she stands 70 feet, 21 meters above the water. And again, she was sitting in third after three rounds of diving. Look at the folks in the boat. Hey, they're kicking up some waves for her too. Yeah, yeah. A little agitation, just getting focused, starting to visualize the dive. Now, Ellie Smart's in a good position right now. She could make the podium here in Paris. So if she scores above sixes, she can move into the lead and may find herself on the podium. Armstand dive, very unique way that she gets up into the arm stand. She'll come in sideways, hold steady. Draw, oh, so that Joey, done this long enough with you, you're gonna talk about coming in short. Yeah. So we can recap on that last time. That is very uncharacteristic of her, by the way. But kudos to her. Very, very difficult dive back arm stand. Two and a half somersaults with two twists. But again, it all comes down to the final part of the dive and getting that entry right. So coming in short, you have Ira Schmidbar on the left-hand side. She's your leader with 316.80. Does it hurt? I mean, you have a great job of her doing the arm stand dive, but everyone always wonders and asks you, Joey, right here when you come in short, does it hurt? Yes, it does. I mean, even if you land vertically, it can't hurt. So short or vertical. So vertical is, of course, vertical. Short is and the dive like that where you land on your chest and your neck is out. The next day, you'll feel it in your neck when you land short like that. So that can stem from a number of reasons. Perhaps the takeoff or how you adjust at the end of the dive. I'm going to look at how she comes out. She bends into the pike there, comes around, floats it. She just looked like she didn't quite know what to do. Just needed to bend the hips a little bit more to pick up the speed, but easier said than done. So a bit of a shame for Ellie Smart on that dive. Yeah, not the score she wants. What a huge advocate for the sport, has so much passion, does so much for not only the sport, but the kids getting involved in the sport. Sports psychology student at the University of California, Berkeley. She doesn't like competing. Today she's not gonna like competing either with that score, but nevertheless, she always has a good attitude. Founder and CEO of the Clean Cliffs Project. And it looks like Schmidbauer will land on the podium with two competitors remaining. So Schmidbauer with her first Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series podium. That's why the celebration's going down right now. I get it. Rhiannon Iflin. And then followed by Sorry, Molly Carlson, and then Iflin. So Molly Carlson, you talked about the tight point spread and the difficulty that Molly Carlson has coming into this fourth round over Iflin. Yeah, this will be interesting when you do a more difficult dive. There's more risk. It's harder to hit the dive and get it executed perfectly. She's marking out a run up. So this is the highest degree of difficulty in this round, 4.4 front, four somersaults with a half twist. Need sixes to get into the lead. A lot going on there, and Molly Carlson of Canada drills it. Huge degree of difficulty on that. And Joey, we talk about not only the degree of difficulty, but we've also talked about the pool versus the nature and how that's where Iflin has a little bit of an advantage. Yep, yep. She has more diversity in her diving, more reps in different types of areas, whereas Molly is still learning yep. these natural environments. Number one, respect for Molly Carlson for doing this dive in the first place. And as you said, she dives indoors, controlled environment. But when you're faced with challenges like we saw in Boston, the cold, the wind, the rain. Sometimes we're in competitions where there's immense waves. 
So when you've got those extra variables, it makes it really hard. Very impressed with the dive now. She's just a little bit hunched, right? So again, we talk about vertical. She's got to be as straight as possible. Why? You want to cut through the water with no splash. Make that rip entry. So this is coming down to a really interesting duel. So Rihanna Niflam will come into the fourth and final round with less degree of difficulty. So it'll all be about execution. But this is going to be a tense moment coming into the last round. Molly Carlson will be pretty curious to see what the scores are. And as all of us standing in awe of this incredible competition, diving from 21 metres, 70 feet off the Sen River. But what matters now is the judges' scores. Schmidt Bauer, current leader, for landing on the podium the first time in her career on this World Series. She is elated no matter what the outcome is. And a bunch of seven and a halfs and a six and a half. So what will this do? That'll easily actually put her into the lead, Joey, yeah. after you add all four rounds together. So scratch the high and the low there. 99 on that dive, 343-0. So Molly Carlson and representing the Maple Leaf will take over the top spot and can do no worse than second place. And now we have our final diver coming up. The legendary Rian and Iflin. 38 starts, 31 of them wins. Top three on the podium, 36 out of 38 times. It's a 95% ratio of her hitting the podium joey i call that stat ridiculous with an rhi oh that is fantastic trace there you go nice little punt so rihanna nifflin so calm and collected went back to australia between boston and this stop a little jet lag got over it six-time red bull cliff diving world series champion continues to be the goat you saw the stats now she doesn't have the degree of difficulty but she has, she, yeah, yeah. she has the execution and she, she has that exquisite smooth style. She has a track record of handling the pressure. But now it'll come down to execution. This is really shaping up to be a pretty exciting final dive here. Now she's going to need eights from the judges. She cannot make any mistakes on this dive. She's got to get it right if she's to, to win the competition here today. So those are the, what she needs from the judges. 89.30 is what she needs for a total to move into the lead and win World Series number 32. Here we go. Look good in the air in typical Rihanna Nifflin form. So beautiful in the air, cuts through the water ripping through the water. And Rhiannon Iflin, you have to give her credit, such a strong mental competitor. And look at the current and the waves from the boats and everything else happening, Joey. That's shifting the depth of the water tremendously throughout this competition. And somehow, she just reads the water like a real surfer does. <laughs> it's just insane how just consistent she is and how she can handle that pressure. It's so difficult. Imagine you're standing on the platform in front of thousands of people and you know it's coming down to you. You've got to get it right. So, and that what makes a, a great champion. So it's the mental strength. That's what you see in great champions in any sport that prevail. They have the ability to handle the pressure when it counts. And it counts here in Paris with an entry like that. I dare say we'll see fantastic scores. In terms of technique as well, the takeoff, impeccable, strong, great tuck position. Coming from that trampolining background, that's called the Barani, the last part of the dive. So she's done that over and over, thousands of times on a trampoline. And combined with elite diving and trampolining makes her a formidable cliff diving athlete. And of course, once again, to reiterate her mental strength is a major, major attribute that is why we saw those stats earlier from Rihanna Nifland. Wow, what an event here in Paris in front of the Eiffel Tower. A real treat for the spectators. Carlson in the lead with 340.30. Schmidbauer hitting the podium after four fourth place finishes, finally breaking onto the podium. And Rihanna
Anna Nifflin awaits the five judges. The high and the lower tossed out. Luck a bunch of nines in there by the judges. She'll throw out an eight and a half and a nine. She will keep the rest. And there you have it. Rihanna Nifflin with 100.70 when you add all four together. 351.70, the cliff diving sensation from down under is once again above the rest. Now this was a tough competition. She did falter slightly in round three, so she was feeling the pressure. She was, you know, obviously a little disappointed with that dive. But in all sports, when you have disappointing moments, how you recalibrate and reset is what counts. And also Irish Smidbow, fantastic. Her first ever podium. She's come in fourth quite a number of times. Yeah, she she's just been that. shy, like, you know, a mere one point or two points. Here, here we go. Yeah, here are all the rounds from yesterday. Tough day yesterday with a little rain rolling in, but here was round one, one of four, and they all count. Yeah, so due to the weather, they decided to do all three rounds yesterday. Not all three rounds, but three rounds. You can see the weather coming in there. Okay, that's round two. Pounding the entry. That's what she's known for. Fantastic rip entries. They had a big reset as well after round two. They had to come back and do this final dive after a big rain break, and that's hard. You know, when you've had some downtime, here's the back triple double. You can just see just a bit of an over rotation. Sometimes you get a unlucky with the waves and the water. It's a bit of a splash. And there she is, honing in the scuba divers. But it came down to the fourth and final round under pressure. And Rihanna Nifland delivers for another staggering win. But I've got to say, this is just one of the most impressive locations I've seen. <laughs> it just does not get any more iconic. So now 37 podiums out of 39 starts. This is her 32nd win, and let's head down dockside with Dave, who's with Rihanna Nifflin. All right, Rhys, so much to talk about today. I think the biggest thing is, obviously, you came in with a lower DD and with less cushion than you were used to. Did that add pressure to that fourth dive? Yeah, you know, um, yesterday, the, the third round dive, my big DD didn't go so well, so I did have a little more pressure um, going into that round, and, and I was feeling it, like I was going to the end, and I was a bit shaky out there, but, you know, sometimes we thrive under pressure, and um, I seem to like it, so, yeah, bring on the pressure. Let's go. I'm ready for the season. And a lot of variables here today. Do you think that's probably half the reason you're up there is down to experience? Yeah, definitely. It's um, it's definitely a daring experience up there. There's a lot going on, and it's, it's hard to to stay focused and uh, and you know to perform with so many distractions and so many amazing things around. But uh, you know, you go into such a hyper focus and and you get by. Congratulations on your victory. Thirty-two wins for Rihanna Nifflin. Dominance. Pure dominance. Once again on top of the podium. And looking for her seventh King Kakili trophy if she keeps it up for the rest of the 2023 season. Again, it's going to be a long time until we see anyone break that record, much like Gary Hunt as well with his yeah. 10 King Kai Achille trophies. We're going to see Gary shortly with the rest of the men. They're coming up next, but the women, it's all led by Rihanna Nifflin with that 351.70 points. And Molly Carlson here, Schmidbauer, congrats to her after four fourth place finishes as personal bests, upgrades and scores a spot on the podium. Jess McCauley, another fourth place finish for her. Ellie Smart, fifth place from third after three rounds. Bumps down just a little bit. So you have the rest right there of the women. As we move on to the men. They also had three rounds of diving yesterday. Usually it's two rounds and two rounds spread over a two-day period. Uh, with the weather, there were three rounds yesterday and then just one round today. And David O.C. actually caught up with Molly Carlson. He told us that, you know, Molly said she was feeling it yesterday. Three, yeah, yeah. Three, three rounds was tough yesterday. It was, yeah. Speaking to some of the other divers. So there's a lot of stop starting as well. So they stopped after a few rounds of diving. So had to wait for about an hour, an hour and a half until the rain cleared. Super heavy storm, as a matter of fact. 
They thought they were going to start diving again. They said, no, 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 wait, rain's coming back again. So to be able to handle that and then come back is really difficult. Also physically difficult. Three rounds of diving on the body, a lot of nerves, makes you tired. And then the, uh, the best score, remember the old 10 bonus points, Joey? Uh, yes, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> looks like a little chi ching. Looks like Molly, Molly Carlson scored scored an extra 10 points. Uh, that is new for this season, added on. Which is which helps, which he came in second place as well. Yeah. That may add up at the end of the season. So every little bonus that you can get, get take it. Look at all the people packing in now. World's best cliff divers, women's competition in the books. As you see everyone on the Debili footbridge, it's a 125 meter, 400 foot bridge. A little arch there, built in the 1900s for the famous World Fair here in Paris. A little history buff there, I trace. Not bad. Thank you, Joey. And that right there is wrapped by French artist Sabrina Chess. So you see the art that is on the tower, 900 square meters. Nearly 10,000 square feet. We'll talk about that in a few. But right now, it is Rihanna Nifflin leading the way after stop number two of the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Molly Carlson. So the battle between those two will continue, most likely through the entire season. So Canada two and three with Jessica McCauley in third. Schmidbauer now moving up into fourth position with her points at 192. Top American Maley Carpenter in fifth. Xanthia Panisi out this competition. She had a good start to the season, but now she, with an injury, uh, is taking this one off. But Iris Schmidbauer, as we said, had a yeah, great yeah. competition the first time she's hit the podium, and she's standing by with David O.C. Dave. Iris, it's been a long time coming. You've been in that top four so much, but to finally make it onto that podium, how are the emotions right now? I don't know, it's like overwhelming. Like there's no better place I could have wished for making my first podium in front of the Eiffel Tower. Like this is amazing to be here and doing my first podium. I'm so happy. I, I don't I don't even know how I want to express myself. <laughs> How does this set you up for the rest of the season? Does it put you in a stronger position with a little bit more confidence? Obviously, like a lot more confidence. Like this is a really confident boost and I'm, yeah, I'm just really happy it finally happened. I've been working so hard and been waiting for this for so long and finally to make the podium is just perfect. <laughs> well, a huge congratulations. Enjoy every moment. Thank you. All right, thanks. Dave, congratulations to Iris Spitbauer. Not bad coming from a diver without a professional diving background. So Joey, we get asked a lot of questions about cliff diving, especially you, since you've been involved in the sport so long. Many people ask us about the impact from yeah. these crazy heights, and which is the topic of your uh, methods of motion. What do you got? Yeah, it is. So you've got the free fall, of, of course, but at one point, you've got to hit the entry. You've got to do it right and it's hard on the body. So in this segment, we're going to explore what happens to the body on impact and how to prepare the body for this. Okay, so right, let's talk physics. By the time the athletes hit the water, they are traveling at 55 miles per hour or 85 kilometers per hour, and that equals 10 Gs worth of force. Let me tell you, that can equal ouch. <laughs> okay. In cliff diving, the free fall acceleration from zero to 55 miles per hour or 85 kilometers per hour happens in just 2.7 seconds. Now, this is comparable to a race car's acceleration of zero to 60 miles per hour in around about 2.6 seconds. Now, once the athletes hit the water, the deceleration is insanely fast. The athletes generally stop within about 12 feet or four meters in just a mere split second. Now, one of the common injuries that can occur in impact is tearing the adductor muscles, which is caused by the legs pulling apart underneath the water. And that is why adductor strength training is vital in the sport of cliff diving. Then on occasion, the athletes over-rotate, or in this case, under-rotate, causing this whiplash effect on the neck, much like a car crash, which is why in sports like cliff diving and motorsports, neck stabilization exercises are a must. Now, of course, the ideal scenario for the athletes is to be as vertical as possible, but in this case, obviously not. Sometimes it doesn't go to plan, so the body must be in prime condition. Trace, there's no shortcuts in this sport whatsoever. There are no shortcuts at all, and 
like the women, the men had three rounds of diving yesterday. So let's take a look at some of the highlights of what went down before their fourth and final round dive. Okay, so we're going to look at all of the rounds from round three, the last round from yesterday. Carlos Jimeno, back arm stand, four and a half somersaults. I mean, he's just a cliff diving machine this year. <laughs> yeah. And finds himself sitting in second position currently. Look at those scores, Ooh. two nine and a halves. And Nikita Fedotov with another arm stand dive. I mean, he's been so impressive this season. And check out the entry, just a disappearing act. So where's he sitting right now? In third. But Konstantin Popovich proving that he is a cliff diving powerhouse and a force to be reckoned with this season. Oh. He's just been so, so focused and intense, training hard. And that focus and training has really paid dividends. He talked about focus and really concentrating on what you need to do, visualizing the dive in detail, combined with his skill training and strength training. That's what makes him a great athlete. Start list right here for the men's fourth and final round. The lowest scores after the first three rounds yesterday will dive first, that of Miguel Garcia. So we will go on down. Now notable right there, Catalan Pereira runs fifth. He's normally higher than that. American David Colturi runs fourth, but Gary Hunt, he's running number six. He's usually right there in the top three. So there are your top dogs right there with Aiden Heslop, followed by Alexei Prigorov. Jonathan Paredes, who had a 10 in one of his rounds, had the highest score so far. Then you go on down the list with Fedotov, Jimeno, and then Konstantin Popovich, as he pointed out, the top diver. He will go last, So which means we'll kick things off with the 32-year-old Colombian, upgrading from wild card diver in 2022 to permanent diver this year in 23. It is Miguel Garcia. Now, just to set the tone here, folks, this platform, see the women's down below it, this platform, 27 meters, 90 feet yeah. off the Seine River. So this, quite the show for the spectators. That's the equivalent of an eight story and a high rise. So go to the balcony, take a look down and you'll see what it feels like. So looking at the, the dive there, in the left hand corner of the screen and the degree of difficulty tariff, new dive for him. And we are off yeah. the oh, That's the way to start off the fourth round and he is stoked. Miguel Garcia. That's exactly what you need to do. And even Aiden Heslop <laughs> is like, where did that come from, folks? 21 meters or 27 meters, 90 feet off the water. The depth, six meters, 20 feet. You only need 16 feet for cliff diving, which is always strange when I hear you say that, Joey, but that's the, that's the depth they need. But this is the way to kick off this round. Boy, oh boy, what a smoking entry. So they're running down to the end of the platform to help generate more rotation and height from the platform. Super scary moment. So he does the triple twist at the beginning. And you've got to get the come out just right. Where do you stop the twist? Right there, into the pike. And he debuted this dive in Fort Lauderdale, the World Aquatics World Cup. And now with a little bit more experience, he's got it dialed in and dialing in the entry that he did on this particular dive. Breakneck speed, 85 kilometers per hour, 55 miles per hour. Oh, just slicing through the water. Perfect rip entry. And sometimes you know it. You hit the water and you can hear it. She's stoked. He's got they all know it. Know. Miguel knows it. Well done. <laughs> no holding back under huge pressure. When you dive first, you have to throw it down knowing the best of the best are coming up next. But Miguel Garcia has to be psyched with this. 346.45. A reminder, all four dives, all four rounds count. Three happened yesterday. This is the fourth and final dive. What a show to kick things off on the men's side. And a guy who knows how to put on a show is Artem Stilchenko, 39 years old, the oldest in the field. He's three months older than Gary Hunt. This is his 67th career start on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series, matching Orlando Duque for the third most starts on the World Series. Joey, he still holds, holds a spot in the record books. Yeah. Right, he's a winner of 11 Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series events. 
between 09 and 2016. Second all-time wins behind Gary Hunt. He gets the most 10s behind yeah. Gary Hunt. Legendary. Very interesting dive here. I'm going to explain afterwards. Watch the last part of the dive carefully. Whoa! Artem Solcheka with a blind entry. <laughs> so that's the only one. You talk about blind entry. Yeah, it's yeah, the only yeah. one that we see. Right. Yeah. And, and blind entry to... meaning what? Okay. We'll explain all we see the replay. <laughs> I mean, uh, but literally at the end of the dive, you're almost blind. Let's I, face it. I'm chuckling because I, yeah, love, yeah. I love this dive. So you I get really extra do. DD. So you, like when you do certain positions or certain styles of entry, you might get a bonus. And in this case, you do get a bonus. Okay, here's the twist. You come into the pike, and soon you're going to see where it gets really interesting. He sees the water, and then he turns over. Now he's blind. He can't see the water. And now he's just trying to look over his legs to try and adjust for the landing. And that's why he gets a bonus. But what it means is it's really hard to nail the entry. And he's smiling. He's like, yeah, I know I didn't quite hit it. But still, hey, respect for Artem Sulchenko, the blind entry I mean, specialist. Does that, give a, does that give a little sting right there? I mean, uh, just oh, coming, in, coming in a little yeah, short like I, that? I won't say where the water went, but anyway. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> 69 on that. <laughs> and Artem Sulchenko, one of only four men in the history of the World Series to win the King Kaakili Trophy. So Solchenko with a 292.75 will not hit the podium today as we get ready for one of two Americans. James Lichtenstein, David Colteri is the other. He'll come up shortly, actually next. The only American permanent diver on this series. And that means he's had an automatic invite to all the stops. That's when we say permanent diver. They have there's eight men and eight women who have earned a permanent diver position, then four wild card divers every stop. So this guy right here, what's he doing? Is he doing his quint? Uh, yes, he is. If you oh, nice. What, if you don't know what a quint is, it's something that's it's very five. hard to count. It's five. <laughs> cinco. Sank. Cinco. Fumf. Quintuple. Yeah. Whatever you, yeah. Anyway, five. It's pretty damn hard. Let me tell you. <laughs> In fact, Gary Hunt, we asked him if he would try that dive, and he said, no way. Okay, so back we'll, we'll, we'll five somersaults. Here. Okay, so he's got a bit of bandaging on his leg there, so a bit of a strain from that tough impact from those speeds. 85 kilometers per hour, 55 miles per hour. See if you can count the somersaults. A dizzy dive right there by James Lichtenstein of the United States. Now, a bit of a splash show. You can break that down in a second. I'm talking about a guy in his sixth ever World Series start. He has one podium. That was a third place in Sissicon last season. That earned him a lot of respect and a position for the rest of last season. Throwing his hands up in the air. He knows he can do it better. Now, yeah, he's the first person in the world actually to perform the back quint. We've seen him absolutely drill it. And that's why he got that third place finish in Sissicon in Switzerland last year. Okay, but what went wrong? What I noticed in real time, he was a tad slow in rotation. So he needed a little bit more power and to get into his tuck a little bit quicker. But he knew it as well. Watch this. He, he holds on longer. He's like, whoa, I'm slow in rotation. And he stays hunched and they kind of roll through the water. So the reason why the entry didn't go to plan was because the rotation wasn't quite right. But amazing, amazing aerial awareness. You can see the scuba divers plunging down there to make sure the athletes are A-OK, -okay, but a little disappointing for James Lichtenstein. Yeah, a huge degree of difficulty on that. You see that with the DD. So 82.15 on that fourth dive. You add the three from yesterday. So Lichtenstein in second behind Garcia with 333.75. We've seen him do better. And he's still just kind of getting started on the World Series. As we look at Nikita Fedotov, who had a great first three rounds. He will go number 10. Ended up third after three rounds. He's looking sharp. That's the underneath the tower right there. Scaffolding tower that is wrapped. 95 steps for the women, 125 steps to the top of the staircase. No elevators for these athletes. It's all big hike up. Tiring just to do that as we look at David Colturi. Solid start to the season, seventh in Boston. First stop of the season. 
celebrating his 61st career start on the World Series. The few guys do for a win. Dave Colturi. Super cool dive. Reverse. So he's going to stand forwards. And he's going to jump up. Then he's going to move forwards, but rotate back towards the platform. To reverse two somersaults, four twists. Our leader Miguel Garcia looking on. Spinning there for Colturi. <laughs> and the Policia in our way right there, but we'll take a look at the replay. But David Colturi, it sounds like the crowd loves it. Miguel Garcia, we'll see what that does right there. Colturi, though, for Purdue back in the NCAA days before entering the world of cliff diving. <laughs> Now, how dare the police interrupt our <laughs> shot? We needed to see that entry. We've got to wait for the replay but so we know what, what happened. Hey, that's what it's all about, yeah. the Sen River. That's what we're up against. We talk about cliff diving being out in the nature, right? This yeah. is what it is. This is what it is. Hogging the view. So, beautiful reverse twist. It's a great technician. Uh, David Couture had a shoulder injury on a similar dive. When he hit the water, the arm was out and Ooh. pulled up. And actually, he rotated, or ripped his rotator cuff. And David was saying, we have a conversation a few days ago, and he's saying, I want to add another twist to this dive. He's done that before. So that would be a reverse two somersaults with five twists. A lot of risk in that dive. David Couture, a mighty fine job. Nice and clean through the water. Great technician, got a good yeah. technical diving foundation, which helps with cliff diving. Yes! Yeah. Whoa! Whoa. And a ten right there on the left-hand side by the Canadian judge, Olivier Morneau. And Colturi lands a 10. He loses it because the high and the lower drop, the remaining three, multiplied by the degree of difficulty. So on that dive, he gets a 131.10, adding all four together. Between yesterday and today, 387.20, 34 year old David Colturi of the United States. Now the score to beat. <laughs> Fans loving it here. Second stop of the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series, the women's competition in the books. Rihanna Nifflin winning that competition. And now we're looking at Catlin Peretta, fifth to go of 12 in this fourth and final round of diving. Beautiful shot of the Eiffel Tower in the background. Talked to some of the divers. They said it's very distracting standing up there, although it's a nice little view, but a lot of people, a lot of scenery. Ready for Catlin Peretta, Romania. Back four somersaults, two twists. Oh, yeah! yeah. Did he, even land? did he even land in the water? I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't see anything. Poof, where did he go? I didn't see anything. Perfectly piercing into the water like a perfectly swished basketball. It goes Kathleen Pereira of Romania. Now, after the first three rounds of diving, not the position he wants to be in. There's a lot of catching up to do. No. A and lot of big names coming up. Yeah, and this season, a lot of the athletes are just ramping up the degree of difficulty. Yeah. And it takes a little while to get consistent. So Costa in the beginning was a little, Kost Konstantin Popovich, his Romanian counterpart, was a little inconsistent with his new dives, his really difficult dives. Now he's fine tuning it and nailing the entries. So you've got to have the degree of difficulty with a good entry, but stunning shot there. But what I love about Catalan Preda, he's so smooth. Technically proficient, takeoff brilliant, beautiful flight, smidge, smidge short of vertical, but really an elegant dive from Catalan Predator. 28 degrees Celsius, 73 degrees Fahrenheit here in Paris, France, as Catalan Predator, one of the Romanian sharks, his counterpart coming up last in Konstantin Popovich. Right now, the 391.75 for Predator puts him into the lead over David Colturi of the United States. lining up at the Billy Footbridge, enjoying the best of the best, and listen in as they'll go wild for the Frenchman. 
Gary Hunt. Standing behind him is Aiden Heslop. He will follow Gary Hunt. Aiden Heslop, the youngest in the field, who's idolized Gary Hunt since he was a child, got into the sport because of Gary. Formerly a Brit, now has citizenship in France. Ten-time King Ka Keeley Trophy winner, the most decorated cliff diver of all time and will most likely be considered that for many more years. What a feeling it must be to stand on the platform in your home crowd, the city that you live in. What a moment. And here was Gary last year. He hasn't won in France. Still trying, but he was second place last season, lighting it up. It was a lot hotter weather last year here in Paris in the Seine River. But nice for Gary not to have to travel so much. That's what he told us. Yeah. Didn't have to worry about the jet Get lag. the Metro, then you're there <laughs> on your cliff diving platform. <laughs> He's also trying to qualify for the Summer Olympics, which is held again here in Paris in just a little over a year. He's going to try to compete in the 10 meter synchro competition. He's been training for that event. Most likely will take next season off the World Series to do that. Gary would need nines to move into the lead. Here's his signature dive, the triple quad. First person in the world to do this dive. There's a degree of difficulty, 5.2. Kaboom! The legend of Gary Hunt rolls on. Even though he's not in the position he wants to be, running number six of 12. He's going to have to have some huge scores to be on the podium. Will that cut it, Joey Zuber? Pretty damn good dive, I have to say. Gary Hunt, the great. His 94th start on the World Series, most of anyone. Never missed an event since the debut of the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Just remarkable. Never to be that badly injured so you can actually compete in every single competition. A feat in itself. Probably the reason he's done that is because he's had very few injuries because he enters the water so cleanly. He doesn't put a lot of strain on the body. Now, it's pretty interesting, as we said, he's looking to compete in the Paris Olympics in synchronized diving. That was his original goal as a childhood boy, and it wasn't to be. And then he entered the sport of cliff diving and what a remarkable career he's had. So he may be able to cap it off, come back full circle and dive in the Paris Olympics. Imagine that, to cap that off when you're a grandpa in your chair. Yeah, man, <laughs> I did it all. <laughs> well, the wow. judges love it as always. Gary Hunt weighing in on some giant scores. So Gary Hunt with a 140 on that. 399-60. Let's go down to D. Let's go down to David O.C. Who's with Carlos Semeno. Carlos, we are here in Paris, and I want to discuss the big change this year. What has made you look like you're on such good form? So I uh, moved to Madrid six months ago. And I did the, the homework right there. So I trained in the two new dives that uh, made me this year to be on the podium. That, that was the main goal for me, like years ago. So finally, I felt that when you do the homework right, after that, you just need to do the same in the competition. And hopefully, it's uh, going to be good. So yeah, right now I feel good. I feel ready. Yesterday was a good day. And today, more to come. All right, now we've seen that you're well able to get on that podium. Do you truly believe that you can make it on to that first place position? Yes, that's the main goal for me today. Uh, I've been doing a lot of exercise of visualization this morning. I've been very focused, I've been meditating with myself. And I think today is the day that I can get up there. All right, well, good luck and thank you so much. Back to Trace.
All right. Carlos Jimeno looking confident, diving strong. He will go number 11. So Gary Hunt was number six of 12. This is Aiden Heslop. He's seven to go of 12. Women's competition finished up earlier. Men's competition, we're in the middle of it now. Fourth and final round dives. Molly Carlson, Aiden Heslop's girlfriend, looking on. She had second place finish in the women's competition earlier. This guy finished third at the season opener in Boston. What do you got, Joey? Now, folks, this Big. is totally, totally insane. Six point ridiculous. Six point two. <laughs> Look at the tariff on the side. You can see right up almost at the top at 6.6. He's almost maxing out. He debuted this dive last year in Boston. Front. Four somersaults, three and a half twists. Again, the running takeoff. Why is he doing it? He needs every ounce of rotation, every ounce of power that he can get to complete this dive. So Heslop with a lot of things happening in the air. A lot of twisting, a lot of flipping. Molly, the look on her face. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. can land that a little bit better in the water, Joey. That's yeah, about it. Exactly. But Whoa. unbelievable how busy that dive is and how hard he has to work. The twist in this dive is very, very difficult. He's 21 years old. You and I talk about the progression of the sport, right? The new guard. He's idolized Gary Hunt his whole life. Yep. In dive is why he got into it. I love the fact that he goes for it because it's going to pay off. Yes. And pretty soon he's going to be the next Gary Hunt where nobody's going to be able to beat him if he keeps this up and then he starts putting those entries in beautifully. I think you're going to see his name on top of the podium every single event. Yeah, with more time, this dive will get more consistent. So he's got the triple twist. It is so hard in that twist. The legs want to pull apart. You can see that pretty hard Whoa. impact. A bit of a chin shot, as we would call that. Definitely landing short. So watch this here carefully. Arms above the head. They'll throw. That helps get the rotation. But right here, the legs just want to fly apart. He's got his toes overlapped so the legs don't pull apart. He's squeezing his body with everything he's got. Now watch here carefully. Sees the water. He's like, oh, I don't have much room. Whack. Right in the chin there. That is called short or vertical and you feel it. It's a punch in the chest. It's a punch in the neck. Not easy. So there will be some deductions. It's unfortunate. But again, kudos. 6.2 degree of difficulty. Full respect for Aiden Heslop. Full throttle by Heslop. 6.2 DD. 93 on that dive. So it's not the score he wanted. When you add all four rounds together, 362. So Heslop will not see the podium today. Gary Hunt still in the top spot with a 399.60. Five divers remaining. Going back up to the top of the platform. 27 meters, 90 feet off the Seine River here in Paris, France. Talked about the Olympics in Paris. The opening ceremony will be held along the Seine River. As Kathleen Peretta, Gary Hunt have a little chat. Alexei Prigorov. You talk to Alexei a lot. You talked to him this morning, you talked to him last night. You helped coach him a little bit. Great guy, great diver. Here we go. And Prigorov! Yeah! <laughs> oh, Gary knows it. Yeah, he loves it. Molly loves it. Everybody knows it. Wow. Round of applause. When we were in Boston, we talked about one guy that if you're going to root for to get on the podium, because he just hasn't got there yet. No, right? no. He's been in so many competitions, you know, throughout his career. I mean, 24 now after today. Or this is 23. And he just is always right there on the edge. As you said, he's also a bronze medalist in Beijing Olympics 2008. But springboard diving, that's only three meters, and he's made the transition to 27 meters, 90 feet high. He has made the podium in a World Aquatics World Cup before, third place, but he's still missing that elusive podium in the Rebel Cliff Diving World Series. But look at the entry. Great entry. Ripping it. Will that sort of disguise things for the judges? You see a little break there. 
I'm just getting picky, but I just saw his legs come apart a little just bit there. Just a little bit, yep. Very well spotted there, Trace. You're learning as we I'm go. I'm learning, I'm learning. Oh. No, but form is important. Again, the judges look at the takeoff, the flight, the entry. Maybe some small deductions for the form. But the scores will be... Rigora with a 130.05. That'll do it. That'll get him on top of the podium for now. 405.15. For Alexei Prigorov of Ukraine, who claims he's afraid of small swimming pools. And I'm not quite sure what that means. Like, uh, yeah, well, the ones with little turtles on it or sunfish, I don't know. But he's afraid of small swimming pools. Yes, he is. And now he's on top of the podium at the moment. At the moment. Now he's got a nervous weight. He's got to watch everyone else dive and see how this story unfolds. Don't forget to follow us at Red Bull Cliff Diving on Instagram and check out the Red Bull Cliff Diving Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Great photos, videos posted over the past several days here in Paris and all season long. Scenic locations, Prigorov on top right now, 40515. Hunt in seconds. Four divers remaining. Jonathan, per Jonathan Perretta is up now. 65th start on the World Series, one of four men ever to win the King Ka Keeley Trophy. That was back in 2017. And the running takeoff it's becoming the norm, the cliff diving scene now. Here we go. So to go, Johnny Paredes looked nice in the air. Usually he he just rips through the water so nicely that that's what the judges are used to. So you just see a little bit of splash out of Paredes in it, and it kind of throws you off. I was surprised yeah. right there. But I mean, it comes down to split second judgments in the air, and it's so easy to make one small, tiny mistake when you're traveling at those speeds. Really interesting way he's doing the dive. So somersault at the beginning, twist the middle, and then watch this, getting tricky. Back into another somersault. And they're coming around seeing the water. So the athletes will play to their strengths. Some will twist more at the beginning. He's choosing to twist in the middle of the dive. And again, an over rotation. Again, it's a bit like doing a little wheelie and then going backwards. So going past that vertical line. He knows it. Johnny Paredes. A dream as a kid to become an American football player. Instead, he chose to be an all-star cliff diver. So choosing surf over turf. Not many similarities with cliff diving and football, Except for, especially the equipment. Yeah. All right, 84-60 on that last round dive. Remember, three rounds happened yesterday. Brianna Nifflin winning the women's competition, congratulating Johnny. They're really good friends. And Paredes will move into fifth place with that 367-60. So it is Prigorov leading the charge and setting the tone. The only one over the 400 mark with 405-15. Three divers remaining in this men's competition, including Nikita Fedotov. You'll need some serious hot sauce on this one if he wants to stand on top of the podium. Let's see Nikita Fedotov putting that mouth guard in. Again, highlighting how strong the impact is. 10G forces. Hit the water at 55 miles per hour, 85 kilometers per hour. Hard dive. Reverse. Three somersaults, three twists. Facing forwards, you'll jump up, move forwards, rotate towards the platform. Super tough. Nikita Fedotov, the 28-year-old independent athlete, one of the most consistent divers on the World Series. We will see if that can hold him on the podium. He was third place after the first three rounds, all four counts, every dive. Just two more divers to go. So, as I said before, an incredibly difficult dive. If you don't get the arms through, and you don't get the rotation right, so yeah, he didn't quite push through to the legs. So I believe he's a little stuck in rotation, comes in there. That is where the dive feels so, so heavy because you're moving forwards and Baraning makes it harder to finish the rotation. Again, you can see the water coming up against the chest. You can see a bit of that splash popping off in front. See there, you gotta move forward. You can see the legs a little bent. There's a twist starting to pull apart a little bit. Again, that centrifugal force. But he's a mentally strong athlete, and he talks about 
how you really have to have a good mindset coming into the sport. And the greats always prevail with mental strength, but you need physical strength, you need the skills, you need the technical background and bravery. The high and the low scores are tossed. The remaining three multiplied by the degree of difficulty. So he'll throw away a seven and a half and a seven. And there's a reason why there's a celebration here of Mr. Alexei Prigorov because a 40205 puts Fedotov in his second and Alexei Prigorov from Ukraine will get his first career podium. There you go, Alexei. Finally gets it. Well done. I said I said in Boston, that's the guy to root for if you want, yeah, you yeah, want to yeah. see that that underdog. So over the over the weekend. I think he was so mad with his performance in Boston, he's like, no way, I'm gonna do this. As we look at Konstantin Popovich warming up, he'll be our last and final diver. Over the weekend, coming to watch the world's best 45,000 fans. And we thank all the fans coming out here to the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. As I said, Konstantin Popovich will dive last as we go back to the top now for Carlos Jimeno. And Jimeno, great shape. A lot of determination. We heard from him earlier coming into this with a lot of confidence. Started off the season with a bang, placing second at the World Aquatics High Diving World Cup, and then a second ahead of Gary Hunt. He's got himself. There on the podium in Boston. Sorry, Joey, go ahead. Yeah, he's got himself in a great position here. He's just going to score sixes from the judges to take the lead. Mega dive here. Back five somersaults. Big deep breath, calming the nerves. Nervous moment. Carlos on the platform. Then it'll be Konstantin Popovich to cap off the final round. Who will win? Semeno has been nailing that dive over the past several weeks. Joey, we've seen it. We've seen it in training. We've seen yeah, it in yeah, competition. Yeah. A little pressure may have got to him here. Yes. Into the Seine River because that's not the particular entry that he was looking for and that we've seen over the past several weeks. Yeah, he's just been on fire, looking so sharp. He came into this season looking like a completely different man. 2022 Carlos, the 2023 Carlos has just been remarkable. But unfortunately on his last dive here, it just did not go to plan. Bang, you can see the splash coming forward again to highlight the fact that's landing short of vertical. And it could stem from a number of different reasons. Either A, not enough rotation, or at which point you come out of the dive. When you see it in real time, it's easier to judge it. Let's see where he comes out. Yeah, perhaps a little early out and just running out of room to finish the dive. And it comes up so quick. I mean, that's five somersaults. You're kicking out the four and a half mark. You much. put your head back, but not the result he wanted in terms of the entry. Doesn't take much. And there you have a lot of low scores. I mean, some athletes, Joey, their fate is determined on a 90-foot golf putt in different sports. And for cliff diving, it's determined on a 90-foot plunge into a river. Not easy. No. And Jimeno with an 84 on that particular dive when you add all four together the three from yesterday 296 six, zero. so fourth place off the podium which means Prigorov not only gets a personal best with the third place before Jimeno now he upgrades to second he can do no worse than that yeah with one diver remaining in this <laughs> men's competition he's like I can't believe it hey. <laughs> his good friend Artem Sorcheko there I'm sure he's pretty proud of him and here he is, Konstantin Popovich, the Romanian shark, winner of the first stop in Boston. The guy is on a mission, especially oh, yeah. after taking most of the season off from an injury, a lung injury, punctured it in Sisakon, Switzerland last year. He started off the season great. That's like kicking the beehive. He was mad. <laughs> you know, now, now he's out to sting everybody. Yeah. I, mean, I think he was so determined to come back this year strong. 
but he was diving very well last year and of course taken out with the injury but folks look at the degree of difficulty tariff look at the scale the slider there 6.0 almost at the top back arm stand three and a half somersaults three twists how difficult is it to do an arm stand joey i mean if a little gust of wind will blow you off that place there's no railings there's no nothing on that oh, platform it's a, it's a walk in the park trace it's easy sure this guy is one supreme athlete i mean i've, I've walked down on that platform and i can't even get halfway out it put an arm stand on the end of it shaking like a leaf it's got to get scores greater than fives to be the winner here in paris six kilometers per hour so the wind is picking up a little bit see how he manages it Oof. he's really slow with your movements in the handstand you don't want to overbalance there you have it right there a very difficult dive joey tough to see the entry from that angle but you'll be able to break that down. Prigorov, who's sitting in the lead with a 405-15. Signs of appreciation from him and the rest of the competitors. Will Konstantin Popovich go back to back and two for two here in 2023? I'll answer you right now. I believe, yes. Everyone knows it. They're pretty good mathematicians, the athletes. They can calculate the scores. Yeah. And when you have massive degree of difficulty of 6.0 and that's what you do so sometimes you can underperform a little bit but you can back it up with a degree of difficulty to keep yourself in a good situation to hit the podium but Konstantin Popovich coming into this season with the highest overall degree of difficulty kicking the legs wrapping the arms into the twist he's such a supreme athlete he's also looking to try and make his way into the Paris Olympics for diving. So he's a dual athlete, competing in diving and cliff diving. I mean, how do you do that? And then how do you come back from a punctured lung? It took him a good three months. There's a lot of pain with that injury. And then to come back with vengeance and dive like this, proving that he is one of the greats in the cliff diving scene. An absolute supreme athlete. I mean, he talked about focus as well. He talked about how you need to really carefully visualize the dive. Not just visualize, say, oh yeah, I can see you doing the dive, but to really picture it perfectly in your mind to help the execution. Focus is important, he talked about that. All right, this is for the win. Here's a guy that's chasing that 500 score mark like Maverick in Top Gun reaching Mach 10. He'll get there. Maybe not today here in Paris in the Seine River. But Popovich going for two wins in a row and with the eight and a half being tossed and an eight as the low it looks like Konstantin Popovich will do it and make it two for two so there you have the scores as you said the competitors know how to do the math very quickly with those three eights 144 on that final dive 64.90 blowing away the field the romanian shark sneaks into the shallow waters of the Seine river and attacks oh, i like that one Whoa. actually talked to konstantin popovich's sister who lives in australia and she was saying cost is going to win this year that's her prediction so far he's looking in good stead it could be a new Rebel Cliff Diving World Series champion, but still, we've got more competitions to come. Congratulations, Konstantin Popovich, Alexei Prigorov, Nikita Fedotov on the left there. Those are your podium boys. So the celebration begins. Popovich prevails in Paris. And we had three rounds of diving yesterday in some unique conditions. And Popovich, so confident, mentally strong. You see the clouds, a little rain rolled in. The competition was held up. 
round two, nailing this one, Joey. What a competition for the Romanian. Absolutely exquisite in terms of his entries. He's like, oh, there we go. The beautiful Eiffel Tower. And as you said yesterday, pretty tough with that break. They had to break off for about an hour and a half, two hours to wait for the weather. Super heavy rain, but mentally strong. But it all came down to the fourth and final round here today. And now he is crowned champion in this stunning location in front of the Eiffel Tower. Konstantin Popovich has got to be very proud of himself. He's done the hard work and it's paid dividends. So there you have it, Popovich again prevailing in Paris. And he's standing down by the river with David O.C. Dave. Costa, what an amazing performance to kickstart this season. Two back-to-back -back wins. Has the work finally paid off? Uh, yeah, well, it's it's a, it's a hard work all the time. Uh, and, of course, it pays off. Um, maybe it's not always the same, but, you know, I'm aiming for, for greatness all the time. And what about that last dive? The wind got a little bit stronger. You're getting in the handstand position, and you knew that you could do it if you hit it. Was that a crazy amount of pressure? Well, actually, when I got up there, uh, the wind started to, to gust a bit. And I was uh, not afraid, but, you know, I was concerned. But once I, I got in a handstand position, uh, it dimmed down. So it was fine. Amazing. Congratulations. Enjoy the win. Thank you very much. So Popovich will celebrate two for two. Here in 2023, the men's results for today here in Paris. With Popovich winning gold. Alexei Prigorov, what a day. His 405-15 finally getting on the podium. Not only that, second place in Nikita Fedotov. He's been in third before. Lands on the podium once again. He had a Third place finish last season. Gary Hunt, though, <laughs> coming from yeah, yeah. low in the running order and working his way up with that 399. So there you have rounding out the top 12 is Artem Selchenko. David Kulturi, the top American. Heslop, not the day he wanted in ninth place. We'll see more of him in the next few stops. The highest score, David Colturi, round number four. And he scored a 10, so it's all about the highest score from the judges, not the total score. Actually, Jonathan Paredes had it, but if you've got the higher degree of difficulty, that's your trump card, David Colturi. Congratulations, an extra 10 points towards, towards the World Series. A great new introduction to the competition this season. And he's happy with that dive, wow. 10 bonus points in Popovich after winning the first two stops with 410 points. Great start to the season for him. He's on a mission. How about Carlos Jimeno sitting in second in the points. Gary Hunt holding in there today helps after running low in the order, but having a really nice dive in that fourth round, putting him right in there. Nikita Fedotov moving into fourth. Alexei Prigorov with a great day in fifth. And then Heslop you have in sixth place right there. So a great competition on the women's and men's side here in Paris, France for stop number two of the 2023 season. And we look at the next stop right here in Pognano Mare, known as the European home to cliff diving in Southern Italy where the houses literally rise from the rocks. The divers launch from a balcony of a private residence into the Adriatic Sea in front of thousands of locals and tourists. Joey, a little mozzarella, some raw fish, ice cream, a little cliff diving. Doesn't get in any better than that. A little frito misto, that's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be live on Sunday, July 2nd. For all the details, keep up with RedBullCliffDiving.com. So that's it, that's a wrap. Once again, don't forget to mark your calendars for July 2nd and the third stop of the series. Until then, on behalf of Joey Zuber, David O.C., and the rest of our team, I'm Trace Worthington. Thanks for watching. Au revoir from Paris, France.